when you deal with people in relationships, first thing you got to re realize, inside of your body, inside of your head, take this in. It's not about you. Nine times out of ten, it's not about you. When I'm driving my car and someone drives speeds by me and gives me the finger, it has nothing to do with me. I don't know you. You don't know me. You've, I've never met you, never seen you. You just drove by my very large, heavily tinted windowed Cadillac and you gave me the finger. I don't know where I'm from. I probably wouldn't throw fingers to tinted big cars. So I'm like, clearly, you're just mad about something. It's not about me. So when we take that in, you know, one of the uh, things I like to do, and this is not mine, this is something that was taught to me by another uh, great, great minded man. Um, uh, what else could this mean? In a relationship, always ask yourself, what else could this mean? And every if something happens, someone's late, pause. What else could this mean? What else could this be about? And every time you ask that question, for every negative answer you have, I want you to force yourself to come up with two positive answers. Hell, be nice, because you said you want to be really chill. Force yourself to come up with three positive answers for every negative answer you have. Why is she late? Man, she's always disrespecting me. Wait, what else could this mean? Maybe she's trying to, she doesn't know which pair of underwear to wear for me, because she's thinking that she wants to be really sexy. Maybe she's trying to figure out what perfume I really like. Maybe she's putting a... Uh, putting roses on the bed because she wants to be all romantic when she brings me back to her place later. Maybe she got in an accident. Maybe she just off the, got off the phone with her mom and there was a big accident, the thing in her family. I've got five reasons right there that calm me right down. And then, you know, address something. You can address it in being cool. Hey girl, good to see you. Uh, everything good? You, you okay? I'm okay, yeah, I'm okay anyway. Oh no, because you were you were late, so I just wanted to make sure that there was nothing, you know, it wasn't nothing with you. If you know that there was something back in, the, I just wanted to make sure it wasn't anything with your mom. I just wanted to make, I, I, was, I thought maybe you got into something with your car, just wanted to make sure. That's great that you're okay. And then you leave it alone and move on. You know what you just said to her is, it's, oh, it's, when you punish someone for something that they've, they've done, they don't want to talk to you. Like when, you know, it's a, it's a classic example, like when you don't call a girl and then you finally call her and she yells at you. You didn't call me for five days. Ah! And you're like, yeah, this is why. Because every time I didn't call you, I forgot. Like, I knew when I did call you, you were going to do this. And then the next time you go to call, you're like, oh, yeah, she yelled at me. And you don't want to call her. You don't want to program people with pain because no one likes pain. Pain is good to motivate. Pain is not good to keep. So you want to be pleasure. You want someone, when she comes in, and even if she was late because she was sitting on the couch with her feet up, if you address it in a way that makes her feel the pleasure in the relationship with you two and the pain from, oh man, I made this guy who's so, like he, he, I made him worry about me. Oh, that's so sweet. I don't want to make him worry. She'll start being early or if she's not early, then you need to go, then you need to address, well, what's the real deal here? Because clearly you're not respecting me and my time. And like, may, maybe I need to give you some, is it, you know what, was it too close to work? My fault. And it's not about being a walking man. You're giving someone who you care about, who you've qualified already and said, yeah, this is someone I want to kick it with. This is not someone who's, like, if I go on a first date with a girl and she's late, she'll not see me. Like, I'll leave. I've left lots of times. I was in LA and I was dating, you know, I got a date with this hot chick and I was supposed to be all excited. I don't give a flying fadu. Like, you are a girl. I'm a guy. Like, there's lots of us in the world. I've seen a few. That's it, right? So, you know, I'm there. I'm at the Starbucks. Ten minutes later, okay, I'm out. I'm going to the gym. I get a message, how come you didn't show up? Where were you? I was like, I was there. What are you talking about? You weren't here, I'm here right now. I was like, well, yeah, you were supposed to be there an hour ago. Like, what do you want me to do? But I came, I was here, I've been here for half an hour sitting. I can't believe you made me sit here and wait for you. Now you know how I feel. I'll talk to you later. Without risk, there's no reward. And it's that thing where we're always scared. Like, what are you scared of? You're scared of a girl saying no? You know how many, I. There was a girl in high school I went to. She was two years old, uh, a year older than me. She, I didn't, I, I liked her. I liked her beyond measure. She was one of the most beautiful women inside and out I've ever known till this day. And then I tried to get out there and we went to a movie and she'd be like, ah, like it told me. And I was like, nah, man, like I want to be with you. And she was like, yeah, no, it's not going to happen. But we can hang. And I was like, I, I want to, like, I want to be with you. Nah. Seven years later, you know, her and I, we bumped, got together. And she, we were talking, chilling, and she was, you know, I was like, yeah, you know that never went away, right? And she goes, yeah, you always just tell me that. Like, I thought you were kidding. I said, okay, well, I'm going to say it again. I want to be with you now. And she was like, really? I, but I have to go to work soon. And, and I was like, I live very close. And it was, you know, and I was kind of, you know, being playful, but I didn't laugh about it. 
Because we always do that. We put stuff on the table and then we laugh to take it back because it softens it a little bit. And the same thing, it's like we say it and then it's like, hey, but you know, it's, you know, I want to sleep with you. I'm just kidding. Unless you're going to do it. Type thing. <laughs> <laughs> How can we have sex? <laughs> 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 and sometimes you just going to put it up because the worst, you know, in business, uh, one of my business mentors, I said, how do, how do I get good at sales when I wanted to be a top salesperson at one of the companies I worked for? I was like, I need to get good at sales. And he said, here's what I did. And take this. He says, you're no worse off when you get a no. And then I added to that, in fact, you're better off because at least you know. I'm going to say it again. You're no worse off if you get a no. And I say you're even better because at least you know. Man, I wonder if she digs me. I wonder if she's feeling me like I'm feeling her. I wonder if she knows I think she's sexy. I wonder if, I wonder if, you sit there and wonder, hey, do you know that I think you are gorgeous? Whoa, whoa, Mark, whoa, we're friends. We, whoa, whoa. I'm, yeah, yeah, no, I'm cool with that. I'm just saying. And all of a sudden, now I, okay, now she knows and now I know. Now here's the difference between, you don't have to push it, but really I do. Please, 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 can I have some? Please, can I have some? Please, can I have some? You're like, you're not a snotty nosed kid. Like, I don't got to beg for cookies anymore. You know, be the best version of who you are. And the only way you can be the best version of who you are is knowing who the best version of you is. And the only way you know who the best version of you is is by writing it down and memorizing it. And every night before you go to bed, that same first list, read that second list too. And every morning when you wake up, that first list, add that second list to it. I am great because. And write stuff down. There's things that you don't even see are talents. I mean, yo, if you can cross your toes in your shoes, I don't know, write it down. I'm not sli I'm not smiling. I'm not laughing about that. I'm dead serious. If you can, you can bend your elbow backwards. You're double jointed. Write it down, because that makes you different. These things add to who you are, and that's the greatness of you. So if you have that and you own that, now when the time is to be attractive, you have an ability to show her who you really are. So many times girls don't mess with guys because they're just like, I just didn't know he was. Uh, like the girl from that I from high school, she was like, I really I didn't know you were serious. Something as simple as that. So seven years of stupidity and waste of time because she didn't I didn't know how who I was, and therefore I couldn't tell her when I had the chance. When you look to give a, a woman something while you're having sex with her, and whatever you want to call it, whether it be to, if you make her feel like it was about her, I guarantee you she'll rock your socks. She'll tell her friend and she'll be back for more. When you get in and get out, you've gotten out and you're going to have a hard time getting in. Because the only thing I find harder than getting in the first time is getting in the second time after you haven't given anything. Because she's like, yo, you messed up my stuff and you, you know, I'm messy and sweaty and I didn't get none. Why, why do I want to do this again with you? And then on top of that, most guys go and tell their friends and tell everybody about it. And then she's like, and you went and tell everybody. Now, I, and I found out that you're talking about the sex that we had that wasn't even that good. Now, why do I, why do I want to be with you again? So that's where the intention is. Again, you go back to giving. When you're giving, you know, you make a girl, you make a girl feel good. You can go over anytime you want. 4.30 on a Thursday afternoon. Hey, you home? Yeah, oh, I'm just headed to work. What are you doing? Like, she's not going to be like, oh, I can't believe you're here. She's going to look at you with some eyes like, I got to go to work, but. Come in. And whether you have sex at that point or not is not the point. The point is she's going to be like, this guy always gives me something that other people don't. Makes me feel, makes me, even if it's something as simple as your passion. When you're passionate about something, um, and this is conversation, we always say, how do I talk about something? How do I talk about something? Talk about your passion. Or take that passion and just, if you give that passion to somebody about anything, they want to listen to you. When you're talking to someone about something you don't know and you don't care about, you talk and sound like you don't know and you don't care, which means I don't want to listen to someone who doesn't know what they're talking about or doesn't care. Because if you don't care what you're saying, why should I? And if I don't know you and you're saying, like you're walking down the street, you know, you're walking down the street every now and then. I know this happens downtown a lot. And there's the homeless dudes who are um, after, out, out at, late at night um, and they want change. And some of them have jokes. Like some of them are really hungry because you'll offer them food and they'll say, yeah, I'll take some food and, you know, go uh, go to a hot dog stand with them and buy them some food. Those guys, I, my heart goes out because, you you know, people have circumstances. Then there's other guys who I, I'm like, you're really not that hungry to me because if you can be funny, you're not hungry. 
don't know if you've been hungry. I've been hungry before. I'm not funny. I'm actually pretty damn like I'm hungry. Ha <laughs> ha. No, give me some food. You know what I mean? So anyway, they'll walk beside you and you'll be walking. And they'll come up beside you. And be like, hey man. I rarely see people stop. Like, hey man, my shoes fit tight like Nikes. Like people don't go. Like, you don't say really. They fit, like you. I don't care. What are you talking about? That makes no sense. I'm leaving. You're crazy. <laughs> That's think of that. That's what girls see you as when you talk about stuff that you don't care about and you don't know. You're you're what? And then they start thinking, well, if you don't care about this, why are you telling me? Oh, because you want to sleep with me. It's the only other logical answer. Or you're crazy. And girls are nice, so they like to go with the nicer of the two evils. You're fucking crazy, or are you trying to sleep with me? Well, most of your friends tried to sleep with me, so you're probably trying to sleep with me. Because you don't look completely crazy because you're cute. Alright, you're just trying to sleep with me, dog. And then they go away.